If I start speaking right now at the start of this video, it's going to completely throw off that line that you always do. No, it's not. I'm just going to say it anyway. Go on. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Switch Up and for another <laughs> You muppet. <laughs> yes. Go on. <laughs> We're going to look at the games that are coming out this week on Switch. We're going to go from the dates of the 30th of March up to the 5th of April. Such a professional. You really, yeah, you really are. <laughs> we are going to look at some games that are already out and uh, obviously then move on to the week at hand just to see what's about and whether it's worth your time and money. Lovely. What games are coming out and those that are interesting that have already come out? Well, let's find out. A big thank you to the sponsor of this episode that's Across the Obelisk, which is very much like Slay the Spire, but it also has a co-op online mode, which is absolutely fantastic and allows you and up to three other people to play together through its campaign. Now, the idea here is that the princess has gone missing. You form a band of, I believe, four different heroes from several different classes and then you head out. It has a world map and you choose different destinations with almost like a choose your own adventure style section between each combat. Sometimes you'll have to fight against multiple different enemies and each of your units has their own deck which gives it a really unique feeling. There is very strong meta progression so whether you win or lose you'll always be able to upgrade your cards, you'll be able to gain new currency to buy new cards and you can also get rid of old ones to try and refine your decks. Once you find yourself completely and utterly hooked on it, which I guarantee you will, you should check out our full sponsored video on this one, then there's a ton of DLC to buy as well. I just went on a complete rampage and bought it all. I just, yeah, couldn't stop myself. It's very good. And thank goodness the game features touchscreen controls. The base experience though, you're looking at £21.99 or your regional equivalent, or there is a pack that includes some of the DLC that's slightly more expensive. Once again, a big thanks to Paradox for sponsoring this episode. Let's look at some games that are already out then, and the first of those is Unturned. Yeah, Unturned, we've just spoken about this. Well, to you we haven't, but to <laughs> us we have. And it's a uh, voxel-based survival game that, uh, you know, Glenn's a bit scared of it, but it is... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> No, Glenn's not scared of it. Um, it basically places you on an island like old school DayZ and you're working together with others and against others to try and become the strongest and survive against these horrible little monkey-like monsters that run all fours and pounce at you. Exactly growl. right. Yeah, and growl. Yeah, scary. It is scary. If you want to know the full story of what on earth he's talking about in terms of uh, being scared of such things, mm. check out our last episode of The Interesting Games. Yep. It will be uh, linked to it in the top right-hand corner. To be honest, the only thing that does scare me from everything you just said is the fact you said Z and not Z. Yeah, that is, a bit <laughs> that is a bit scary, fair play. <laughs> the next one that's already out then is called Redgar the Space Viking. I've actually seen this. I was looking at this on Twitter. This actually looks really interesting. Yeah, it has. Uh, I was expecting a 2D platformer, I must mm. say. Maybe something like Volgar the Viking, you know. But it's actually a top-down twin-stick shooter, isn't it? Yeah, all set in space. It's given me, um, oh, what's the name of that, that game that was Mace the Bounty Hunter or something? Mace Griffin, Bounty Hunter? Is that on... Um, N64. Oh, it doesn't ring a bell, I must say. Oh, I know a game that Glenn doesn't. <laughs> Let's go, people. <laughs> no, I don't know that one. But um, yeah, looks like a classic 2D, or top down, I should say, sorry, twin stick shooter. You have an energy shield and other devices that you can use to uh, try and turn the tide of battle. And you can use stealth or just go all about it. Yeah, I have to say, someone in the comments is going, Mark, Mace Griffin Bounty Hunter was like a completely different style of game, <laughs> which it was. So, all right, whatever. <laughs> Let's move on quickly. That one's £13.49 and it came out last week. We then have Rebel Transmute. What a great name. Yeah, this looks to be, what, an action platformer. This is another one that I was seeing quite a few people were playing and really enjoying, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be very good. This is, a, a Met I think it has Metroidvania elements, mm. if I'm not mistaken, and very much is, is Metroid, basically. Right. You know, it's their version of Metroid. It feels like it in terms of most of the mechanics, but it does it really well from what I understand. So, yeah, this is, it's a shame that we didn't get to cover this, actually, because from what I understand, it's very good. Yeah, it came out about, well, 10 days ago, give or take, from the time of recording called in this video at least. It has over 80 unique enemies and over 10 bosses, so says the blurb, and it costs £17.99, albeit there is currently a 10% discount on that price up until the 15th of April. So then we have Death Trick Double Blind. This one I did watch the trailer for a little while ago and it did catch my eye, I must say. Um, you play, or you can switch between a magician and a detective, and I believe you're trying to solve 
uh, the magician's murder. Okay. It's kind of one of those games where you almost, uh, you know, trying to solve your own your own death. So is this a uh, like a visual novel? I think it's um, more point and click, perhaps with some visual novel elements. It says here that you have a limited amount of actions that you can take before time passes, so you need to plan out what you do and where you go, what you investigate before, I suppose, you're kind of locked in with that decision mm. and uh, there'll be a, an outcome or a consequence of, of your actions, you know? Yeah, it does look quite interesting, actually. Kind of what you've just said there reminds me of an old school game called KGB. I oh, often yeah. talk about and yep. I must go back and finish at some point <laughs> in the near future. This does have a demo as well, it's probably worth mentioning. Mm. And it has been released and it costs £14.99 or your regional equivalent. Then we've got Seven Day Heroes, which is like an action adventure shooter. And it looks to me, the, the second I saw it, I was like, multiplayer. But it isn't multiplayer, which is a shame. That is a shame, it yeah. It just looks like it should be. It looks ideal for that sort of thing, doesn't it? The graphics actually remind me of uh, Death Row to Canada. Hmm. Similar sort of style, you know? Yeah, and you can actually control up to four different characters. Uh, I think they've missed a trick here, I've got to be honest. Now, in terms of what it offers, it's kind of difficult to tell, but it looks like there's, it looks like there's different boss fights and things like that. There's one scene where you're fighting a giant bird. Yeah, it says you clear stages by making use of the characteristics of each of your characters. So I'm guessing, maybe not in quite a puzzle-heavy way, but something like the Lost Vikings, where you have each character that needs to come into play somehow and then you obviously you can clear the stages using them which is perhaps why it is only single player yes i think you i think you've hit the nail on the head yeah you're almost leading them around as a troop aren't yeah, you yeah. like like cannon fodder style yeah. yeah very cool that one released just a couple of days ago as of the date of this releasing and it costs eight pounds 99 Let's move on to the games coming out this week now then, and the first of those is Freedom Planet 2. Now the original Freedom Planet came out, I know it was on the Wii U, and I'm sure it was on things like PS4 as well, and uh, I believe it was made by a team that were initially wanting it to be the next Sonic game. Okay. So I think it was you know a bunch of Sonic fans that, that made a game, and when that didn't happen, they kind of turned it into their own thing. It very much looks like Sonic. Yeah. Like just looking at the screenshots and the trailer, it looks exactly like Sonic, in fact. Yeah, I'm interested to see how this one is, but it looks like the community like this. Has this been out previously? Well, like I said, the original uh, had a, a following behind it. Mm. Um, I don't know if this sequel has been anywhere else yet, or if it's uh, releasing across, you know, across the board as of the fourth. But I do know that the original is, is very well liked. Yes. Yeah, it looks to have come out potentially on Xbox back in February. Okay. Uh, okay. And it received about an 82% Metacritic, um, which seems pretty good. Yeah, it's one actually that I didn't know anything about. How much is that one? This is going to cost £22.99. It has 24 stages, and it says they've expanded the adventure mode this time round. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how that plays out. We then have a game called Dole Explorer. Yeah, this looks a bit like that has been Heroes, doesn't it? It does, yeah, which was uh, a game that came out quite early on in the Switch's life, didn't it? Where you were on like different planes. It was a roguelike, wasn't it? We had different planes that you had to jump between to defeat the enemies. And it, it definitely has that sort of look to it, judging by screenshots at least. Yeah, there seems to be a crafting system in there that, that allows you to craft different dolls and different abilities using the different materials that you'll find throughout it. Maybe that's through defeating those monsters. It also reminds me a little bit of a game called Tevi that came out quite recently, but it looks to be a very different genre than that one yeah it's a deck building turn-based strategy game so again has been heroes i think kind of fits the bill in terms of trying to describe it it says there are over 20 types of actions combo actions you can perform as well and various magical tactics that can be used to help you through each stage selling for just eight pounds 69 which seems like it could potentially be a decent price this one releases on the 4th of april The penultimate game for the week then is The Gap. This looks to be one of those adventure games, almost like a walking simulator from a first person perspective. Yeah. It does look nice, I will say. I, I do like these, but they are 10 a penny now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's so many of them, they have to set themselves apart. It looks like this is previously released and is liked about 7 out of 10 kind of scores across okay. the board. Yeah. But yeah, it would, what's it all about? It seems to revolve around an illness that affects a particular family and the uh, the father of this family, Joshua, explores parallel realities through the use of deja vu, I suppose, to see what could have been or what will become. 
So yeah, I suppose quite uh, surreal in mm. some ways. Has that melancholic look to it as well. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? So it says, yeah, he's a neuroscientist whose family's touched by a rare genetic disorder that slowly eats away at your memories. So yeah, I guess he's that's probably part of those flashes and yeah, stuff, isn't it? I would say so. That one is launching with a 10% discount, taking it down to £16.19, and it launches on the 4th of April. We, Josh? You mean you don't have enough time? Never about her. It was all about you. Joshua Hayes, Department of Neuroscience. She'll never forgive me. We can prevent this from happening again. You should have done more. And the final game for the week, then, is a game called No Umbrellas Allowed, which I believe is from Digerati. You basically become an appraiser. So I think people bring you different items and then you're trying to work out their values and things like that. I guess that's a kind of a reference to the to the title perhaps. But yeah, it looks, uh, I do like these types of things. You know, anything kind of quirky like, um, what was that coffee one where you had to just literally serve coffee? Coffee time? No. Oh. Val Valhalla. Valhalla, that yeah. one. Those kinds of games where it puts you into a role that you you wouldn't usually play um, and turns it into actually a really nice adventure game. Um, but yeah, it, it looks looks interesting. I think it, it sounds like it has a bit of papers please to it as well. Yes. Where you're haggling or, or having to uh, evaluate obviously the items that are brought into this, this pawn shop. But it, I think the title actually alludes to the fact, I haven't just read the blurb at least, that there is a, a suppressant that is in the air by, by the government okay. to stop people's emotions. So it's administered via rain, hence no umbrellas allowed. Oh, which is quite clever. There you go. Is he gonna like? Is he gonna stop taking his medication and then get his two pistols and do the gun carter? <laughs> maybe, maybe. But yeah, it, uh, as you say, perhaps something like Valhalla, but also a bit mm. of papers, please, thrown in there for good measure. It's gonna release on the fifth, and it will sell for sixteen pounds nineteen or your regional equivalent. So there you have it, another week of Nintendo Switch releases. Do any of those games interest you at all? Will you be picking any of them up? Please do let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget, if you are looking for eShop credit to pick any of these games up, you can use our website, switchup.gg. Doing so will get you 5% of your purchase price back in cash back. And there's some links below to some physical games that you can buy, Play Asia and Red Art Games, and you get yourself a nice discount there if you use the code stated. And now premium edition games as well. Yep, absolutely, and that one is an affiliate, so if you do pick up anything there, we'll get a nice little kickback, which is much appreciated. A quick thank you to our patrons and our channel members for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.